So in this lesson, we're gonna add some spring to our animation. This is one of my most favorite uh, mash nodes because you get so much, so much animation for so little effort. So we have our animation kind of done here, uh, or at least you know part of the beginning stages of it. And uh, what I wanna do is add a little spring so everything kind of softens as it resolves into the final uh, kind of image here. So the way we can do that is add some spring. Let's select the mash waiter here and go over to spring, add spring. Now, this um, node is dependent on uh, simulation. So if you scrub the timeline now, it won't be accurate. It won't actually show you exactly how it's gonna be because the spring node needs you to play it from the beginning, basically. And it also needs you to play it, um, pl like play every frame is gonna be the most accurate. And what that means is uh, if we right click on the timeline and go down to playback, bleh, playback speed, I'm just gonna rip off that little menu that you should find down there under playback speed. Um, you wanna make sure you're on play every frame. And what that means is, is when you play every frame, it's gonna have a chance to calculate uh, the dynamic simulation because the spring is basically a dynamic simulation. So now when we play, um, it'll be more accurate. And so I don't know if you can tell the difference, but there's a lot more going on. It's still kind of subtle, but um, there's a lot more springiness happening there, right? And let's take a look from this side. We can kind of see it's all kind of bouncing. But the problem that we're facing here is you can see the spring is actually scaling things down, not just to zero, but into negative ranges. And that's how we get these black uh, squares because it's scaling them inside out. So we need to control that um, in the spring node. Otherwise, we're gonna get these reverse normals because we're seeing the inside out of these cubes. So we wanna do that by adjusting the attributes of the spring. So let's go to spring and the spring values here are gonna be based off of the scale of the world. So if we look at the original cube, I'm just gonna shift H and we can bring it out. And let me just measure the distance here. I'm gonna to go to create measure tools, distance tool, and I'm gonna hold down V, I'm gonna click I'm gonna click over here and we have 0.25, okay? So that's a quarter of one unit. And so that what that tells me is I don't want the spring to affect the cube more than a quarter of a unit. Other, if it does, it'll end up scaling it in the negative, right? Like if I scale this more than 0.25, it'll go negative, right? And it's not doing it here, but <laughs> and it's not really helping my explanation, but you can see this black square here, right? That means it's inside out. And we can play this back and you can see where more of them are doing that. If I can stop it on a, the right point, all of these are getting scaled inside out, right? So that's making it um, not great. And that will really mess with your render. All those will, will render black. No matter what color you put on, they're gonna render black. So to fix that, we need to uh, reduce that kind of max, tr yeah, what's called maximum translational. Right now it's set to 20, and we know we want it to be 0.25, right? Because that's what we measured the thickness of this cube. We, we don't want it to the scale of this to spring more than um, 0.25, otherwise it's all gonna go inside out like that. All right, so I'm gonna hide the original because we don't need that. And now when we play this back, we shouldn't get any black squares. Look, no black squares. And we got a little bit of spring. It's kind of hard to tell, but you can see, watch this settle here. I'm gonna zoom in on the top. See how it, see how it all kind of settles? That's what the spring is doing. And it's very, very small, but like, let's turn this off and watch what it does. It's very stiff. Burp. It, like it just stops. See how stiff that is? And now let's turn spring back on. And that one node, we get all this nice little subtle animation settling down. 
It's pretty cool. I use it, you know, at the end of most animations, I'll just throw a spring note on there and just see how it looks. And usually nine times out of 10, it makes everything look a little bit better. You might have to adjust the maximum translational value depending on the scale of the object. And that's why I measured it, right? It was 0.25 thickness. So I don't want it to affect it more than the thickness of itself, right? I hope that makes sense. I will see you in the next lesson where we will continue to add little layers of complexity like this and uh, keep uh, you know polishing this animation. Thanks for watching.